when we were discussing the different types of metamorphic minerals as well as different diagrams and their approaches in metamorphic regions we were observing paragenesis of different minerals like garnet etc. We also know that for different types of protolites the resultant minerals will be different but these are the hypothetical scenarios and that are really work the petrologists come in trying to determine actual history in the light of the bits of evidences found in the rock in these previous discussions we concentrated mainly on the mineral assemblages without considering in any quantitative detailing we did not do that the compositions of the minerals along the pressure temperature paths say we know that there may be clockwise or anti clockwise there may be differences in the gradient like Now, for any stoichiometric reaction in the form, this is called mass bar. Uh, to use the mineral compositions effectively, we will need to examine how to calculate the metamorphic physical systems approach of the real rocks. All the possible phases of equilibrium approaches are based on the conditions of equilibrium. As in equilibrium, we know that the Gibbs free energy for both of the sides of the reaction becomes equal, and as a result, the difference is zero. And that states that the foreign stoichiometric relation of the form 0 is equal to 0, j is 1 to m, v, j, and g. And that can be written among the components of phases in a chemical system, and an equivalent expression can also be written in among the chemical branches of the phases involved. Mi is a chemical symbol of the jth case, mj is jth phase component, and uj is a stoichiometric coefficient, that is, if that is uh, stoichiometrically, if. Uh, in any component, so, so as an example, if it is a garnet, the stoichiometric component of calcium oxide is 0 0.3, then 0 0.3 will be uh, multiplied by jth phase that is uh, that is the chemical potential, and that will be though that will be I mean multiplied, and the multiplied terms of each of the components will be summed up from j is equal to 1 to m that is suppose the number of the components in the system is m and then they will be uh, i mean added after the multiplication process the mu j is a chemical potential of the j is one of the components of the reaction and this can be solution of the constant equilibrium the function of pressure temperature as well as we also know that for any change of the Gibbs free energy during a reaction, change of the Gibbs 
the energy during a reaction taking the system in equilibrium as well as by of that moment the system remains in isolation however to reach this point the system was closed And the Gibbs free energy changes will be del H of enthalpy that is 290 to the Cp del T plus V del P minus of T del S plus active logarithm of K. Equation 15.3 is the fundamental equation describing the formal thermal relationship of pressure that is the lithostatic pressure of that region temperature that is the temperature on that condition the mineral compositions that is those can be uh, I mean, uh, substantiated from the k term that is right hand side up left hand side below uh, depending upon the last the principle and it is the equation that forms the basis of the calculations of the mineral equilibria as a function of these variables terms del g del h del s del v and del cp as well as free energy there is del G enthalpy, there is del H entropy, there is del S, del V is equal to volume and heat capacity reactions. The equilibrium of the free energy of the reaction must be zero. Then there is a basic postulate, and as we have known from the basic uh, principles of the thermodynamics that we have already done or discussed in geochemistry. And the calculations using a single equilibrium uh, relation in the form of the equation. Applications two or more are combined and solved simultaneously for parameters such as pressure and temperature. Geothermometry and geobarometry, what they does are examples of this type of approach. And geothermometry that considers the uh, determination of the pressure and temperature condition of an equilibrium and calculations that utilize a set of equations in the form of equation 15.3 are completely defined the phase equilibrium of the system. These types of the calculations permit simultaneous calculations of the compositions of all the minerals in an equilibrium assemblage at any values of pressure and temperature. Within the general method, there are two subsets calculations that incorporate only the equations of chemical equilibrium and the calculations that incorporate both the equations of chemical equilibrium and the equations of mass balance. If only the equations of chemical equilibrium are used in two way, then only relations among the intensive variables. Suppose this is a reaction where we are having two moles of A reacting with three moles of B reacting to form C plus or D. So then the enthalpy change will be that is C plus or D minus of 2H A minus of 3H B. The entropy change will be the same, volumetric change will be the same and then this will be dependent upon the molar proportion, enthalpy and entropy, the volume of the heat capacity of the reaction and, and these are these values can be constructed from the table and from chapter 6 it will be remembered that Cp and V are the functions of temperature and pressure. Must be done explicitly. Heat capacity integral can be evaluated from the temperature change of that substance and we have no, we can uh, absolutely know the heat capacity of any substance. Uh, uh, I mean there are lots of ways to do that. As well as del V we can also know this that how much of volume can be changed depending upon the coefficient of thermal expansion uh, that is also coming from the physical, uh, physical, physical background and uh, if we want to perform the integral we will be able to understand what is there and if we substitute these terminologies in the 15.3 number equation then it will be like del H minus of T del S plus V to V del P plus R T logarithm of that is at equilibrium the well derived condition for equilibrium to measure the
pressure of temperature now uh, you have known that in metamorphism there are basically two types of reactions one is that is ion exchange and the second is net transfer the ion exchange reaction where solid solution where sorry where there is a change of the equivalent charge or equivalent radius ions will be substituting each other and net transfer reaction where there will be substitution Now, geothermal energy and geobarometry can be described as a, I mean, the basic method of geothermometry and geobarometry is very straightforward. The value of del H, del H, del C, P, and del V are known from experimental calibrations of thermodynamic tables. As an example, you can find it out in the fill pots. Table is there as well as there are tables in the Google that you may find out from 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 who who is this, this guy the name of this guy is I think it is from Holland and Powell data set and remember this is the exact data set this is also the exact data set and nonetheless is modified for the softwares used in geometamorphism like Perplex, Theriac Domino, or even Thermocalc. And the value of the equilibrium constant is a measure of the sample with determining the composition of the existing minerals using the analytical instruments such as electron micro probe. And this is a very important thing that why it is my probe is important and why I uh, try to discuss this and why in the metabolic methodologists use micro probe. However, there are new uh, uh, I mean instruments all over the globe that is being used for metabolic purposes and metabolic metrological purposes uh, LAI CPMS or laser uh, um, and uh, for the spot point analysis as well as shrimp is also there nowadays and with this data a line of constant equilibrium counts can be drawn on a pressure temperature diagram it is inferred that the sample must have equilibrated somewhere along this line there are two minerals and they are in contact or there is the same mineral which are in contact and they are suppose they are created by some ion exchange reaction between some other set of minerals or one mineral is exchanging some of these components with the with an adjacent mineral so what will happen uh, depending upon the temperature and pressure there will be an equilibrium between those two minerals because they are stable at a particular or at a given constant uh, situation or scenario and if that is the scenario is uh, and if the scenario is getting freezed then the composition if traced back to get the temperature and pressure by the formulations discussed earlier 
we can get the pressure temperature situation of the minerals which had formed by that time however there should be some uh, i mean uh, some measurements or some i mean uh, uh, precautions must be taken because uh, there are certain minerals which uh, sometimes form not due to lithostatic pressure and sometimes they form due to some uh, i mean uh, fluid pressure or hydrostatic pressure there are there might be variations uh, especially depending upon some changes of the matrix or the comp uh, i mean the flow and the the pressure which can be induced for, uh, on the matrix however the essence is that more or less you will have to match the set of mineralogical reactions the set of conditions which are given and the set of uh, tectonic uh, processes or tectonic uh, money you have you will have to take in the uh, take in the back of the mind that if you get uh, pressure like i mean 4 gigapascal from a granulite uh, uh, terrain where all the different minerals are uh, giving you this as well as uh, that pressure is very much not possible in that region because there is no sign of high amount of lead pressure or devitotic stress uh, by some tectonic activity and the other data associated with the with the with the pressure that is derived are not in that region then you will have to think that uh, there is actually nothing money there is a, there might be something actually wrong with that data and sometimes we what we do is to exclude that set of data uh, or those data from our derivations such an example there is an example of the there are two minerals that is almandine that is garnet and which is in contact with phlogopite and it is forming pyro and anite by some exchange reaction many jeotermometers are based on the reactions known as exchange reactions and an exchange reaction is a heterogeneous reaction that can be reduced so that it is written in terms of the exchange components and for example the consider the reaction describing this now how to create or how to how to balance a reaction is easy and it can be done by easily by matrix transposition in matlab your task will be to identify the minerals or the asset your task will be to identify the some uh, sorry you try to uh, be to identify the specific tutorial for that now if i try to suppose there is ferrum that is magnesium and then the magnesium is replaced in uh, i mean ferrum is replaced in pyro from the magnesium and the, however this is an ideal reaction in most of the cases or in ideal cases the complete substitution is not possible there is a component like fe fe0 fe2 uh, fe2 mg1 there might be uh, mg2 fe1 and then what will happen by the reaction is that uh, it will form into fe2 mg1 and this will be formed to mg2 fe1 so the reaction it is not like ideal and in most of the cases this is and that's why stoichiometrically we need to identify how much of iron or magnesium had been substituted by the epm data to know the exact pressure temperature range of this substitution process
and now if we try to analyze this situation in terms of the equations that we have been given now exchange reactions often make good geothermometers because they typically have small del v of reaction because if you think it that one garnet is converted to another garnet as well as one biotite is converted to another biotite and they are in members and the in members of the reactions does not such have that amount of del v in a reaction and because of that fact this is often used these are these can be used as as good geothermometers and not as geobarometers and it can be substantiated from the reaction or the reaction which we are trying to get uh, an idea uh, of the g of a reaction a number of fmg exchange reactions have been calibrated as geothermometers as an example fmg exchange reactions to the calculation of the metabolic temperatures we will focus on the garnet biotite temperature and in this case obviously chemical potential of pyrop minus of and minus of in that equilibrium situation it this will be zero and the uh, del mu that is rt logarithm of k will be that is equilibrium constant in this function of temperature pressure obviously equilibrium must be zero, must be also a function of pressure but the equation 1529 implies this equation implies that the distribution of the fmg between the phases garnet and biotite is a function of pressure and temperature as a general rule the partitioning of the elements between the phases decreases as temperature increases as a general rule partitioning of elements between phases decreases as temperature increases that is k equilibrium approaches to 1 if it is approaching 1 then pyro activity of element activity of anite activity of element it will be same and that will be those will be trying to approach to 1 because the values are getting cancelled and they are getting in equilibrium so logarithm of k equilibrium approach approaches to 0 because in that case the del mu should be is had to uh, is is uh, got to be 0 because they are approaching a g of 0 and this occurs because the temperature is increased and the energetic distinction and this also verifies the fact that the energetic distribution given different elements become relatively smaller and so the crystal display less of the presence of the element over another and now this is a similar thing that was constructed in the various diagrams and this is what is this diagram called to think there is it is an afm diagram and that's how the diagram has been constructed and there are some lines joining them and there is a philosophy behind joining them because at a particular temperature and pressure there will be a particular composition of the garnet of a ratio of fmg which will be in equilibrium with a particular composition of biotite which has a particular uh, ratio of the iron and magnesium as well ideal substitution be here and excelmentin will be fe and this will be pyrope in case of pyrope and anite will be this and this and the equilibrium constant may be written as yes and the discussing the element partitioning and it is common to define a term known as the distribution coefficient of the equilibrium constant of the exponent 3 i hope you can understand the above description because the above description is nothing but the 
derivation of the equilibrium constant Watch that the joining lines are changing its position. That is, temperature at 500 degrees Celsius, distribution coefficient of the garnet and biotite is this composition of the garnet will remain in equilibrium with this composition of the biotite. This composition of the garnet will remain in uh, in that particular composition. Temperature pressure will remain in uh, equilibrium with this composition of biotite. This composition of garnet will remain in uh, equilibrium with this composition of the biotite. As an example, that there is a change of this equilibrium with changing temperature, uh, with changing temperature. Okay, for a similar temperature, there is a change because the equilibrium is, will also shift at that temperature in case of that composition of the garnet and another composition of the biotite. For a different temperature, the composition of and that actually means that if you get a composition of the garnet like in this composition and the biotite is in this composition then the temperature must be 800 degrees celsius had not been in that case of temperature of 800 degrees celsius then there should be deviations from the composition as you can see there are positional changes of coexisting garnet and biotite of coexisting garnet and biotite depending upon the temperature so the temperature is constant as well as the equilibrium at which garnet and biotite are being retaining they are also constant and that is the basic idea that how the tie lines are being made for any solid solution phase or the how the tie lines are being created for any pressure temperature space and there are several different ways of element partitioning between two phases and may be displayed uh, as shown in the figure 15.3.15. For the minerals in garnet and biotite, the element partitioning is revealed on the FM diagram by the slope of the tie lines between the two minerals. At low temperature, the slope is large, and the high temperature, the slope is nearly radial from the aluminium oxide apex. Now I am going to save. Send it to you. Via whatever there is.